Michael B. Jordan, congratulations on your recent win from the National Society of Film Critics. How did it feel when you got the news that you had won? Uh, it was um, it, it was uh, it was shocking. <laughs> it was shocking. It kind of came out of nowhere, and you know, it was, it was the perfect way to kick off 2016. You know, it, it was uh, it was it was some good news to hear in, in, the, in the new year. And I kind of heard it from all over. I think my mom had told me, uh, uh, you know, management my team and stuff like that. And it kind of came from all over. So it was, it was some good news. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the movie Creed. Uh, what was it that attracted you to the film? Uh, honestly, me and Ryan, we had such a, per a close personal connection. And uh, we talked about Creed before we actually shot for Bill Station. And I was extremely excited about it. He told me about his personal connection to the story and kind of where the, where it all came, kind of came from. And I was really excited to kind of be, uh, you know, um, you know, to help tell that story, to help, uh, you know, get that vision for him, you know, out there. And, and literally, we were walking um, to set one day, and he was basically just like, you know, hey, Mike, you want to, you know, play Apollo Creed's son? I got this idea, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, all right, cool. And then that was it. We didn't talk about it for a while. I mean, he kind of pitched to me a little bit, but that was that was really it. And then we went and shot Fruitville, and, you know, two and a half years later, you know, here we are. It, it kind of happened very fast from idea to actually, you know, starting to, uh, to shoot the project. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the character a bit, because he's really interesting in that, you know, there's a redemptive quality yeah. uh, to his journey. And, uh, you know, he doesn't want to, um, you know, he hides his lineage and he wants to kind of prove himself on his own. So can you talk about uh, the character a bit? I mean, Adonis is a, is a very, you know, interesting, you know, character. When me and Ryan were first starting to kind of like, you know, figure out who this guy was and, you know, really break him down to his wants and, um, you know, what he needed, what was his childhood like, you know, you know, what type of personality would he have, you know, having all this, you know, this kind of baggage with him and being in this kind of particular situation that, you know, you know, Rocky did such an amazing job, Sly did such an amazing job of kind of setting this world up for Adonis to kind of live in. So it, it was very interesting to kind of play around with, you know, having daddy issues and, um, you know, abandonment issues and, uh, you know, some anger issues. And, and, and some identity issues as well as that comes along with losing, you know, not having a father around and not having that, you know, that, that, that patriotic, you know, figure in, um, you know, in a young man's life. And I think is you know, very common nowadays. Um, so we, we really wanted to kind of harp on that father son relationship. And um, with, with Adonis, he had trust issues as well. You know, he kind of never really fit into any one world, any one slot. He, uh, you know, when, you know, he, he was kind of turning, his, his family kind of left him, you know, um, when Marianne adopted him, his, his Marianne's uh, biological two kids didn't really, you know, it didn't really sit well with him that he was, a, you know, a son out of, uh, you know, infidelity and, and didn't really kind of connect with him. So he had a very lonely childhood growing up. He was kind of used to being by himself, used to fighting alone. So he kind of had that mentality. So anyway, the frustration came behind not being able to box and not really kind of like, which I think, Deep down for Adonis, he kind of thought of it as a measuring stick for himself. You know, here it is, you know, Apollo Creed, the, you know, the, arguably the number one best fighter in the world. And, you know, I don't know, but his legacy and his image and, his, and what he stood for stops me from doing what I really want to do, which is box. Because Marianne kind of blackballed me from everywhere to be able to train. So I think in, in kind of like, you know, trying to see if I have what this guy has, this image, this person, you know, that I've never really met before. Do I have some of that in me? You know, who knows? You know, being able to, 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 to move out to Philly and, and, and kind of embark on this journey to find Sly, who knew his father more than anybody, and kind of his best friend. And then, you know, also, you know, be a trainer and ultimately the father figure that he didn't even know he was looking for, but ultimately got that in, in, in Rocky. Right, absolutely. Um, now, also, there's the physical aspect to what you had to do. Um, yeah. can you talk about some of the training that you did in order to become a boxer. Uh, training for me, I want to be treated like a fighter, not an actor. You know, so honestly, I wanted to be as method as, as possible. Um, as much as you know, Ryan and the studio felt comfortable with me doing, I was down to kind of get in the ring with with the pro fighters and train, and you know, with with their actual trainers and really start a routine, you know, uh, trying to think where, where should I start? Because I started. <laughs> Push up. Because, 
because it was such a multi-layered kind of thing. I, I started, you know, boxing for a little bit first, you know, just kind of get my feet wet a little bit, kind of understand the mechanics of everything. And then I started weightlifting, you know, heavy. And then it was a combination of both. And all the while, I'm, you know, I'm working out maybe two to three times a day. Um, I'm eating like five to six times a day. So I'm eating every two and a half hours, but completely changed my diet. So brown rice, broccoli, chicken, grilled chicken, variations of a protein, a vegetable, and a starch, you know, portioned out. Gallon and a half of water a day, no seasoning, pretty bland food, man. It was, it was uh-huh. rough. It, it was rough. So I did that, you know, honestly, for about a year. You know, um, I trained with, you know, yeah, Andre Ward up in the Bay, you know, and, and he, you know, is undefeated fighter. He's, he's the real deal. He plays uh, Wheeler um, in, in, the, in, the, in, in, uh, in Creed. And I trained with him, sparred with him, and he's the – man, that guy is the real deal, you know. <laughs> I, it, I just remember seeing the ceiling a lot, you know, the ceiling lights. I, I remember what the ceiling of the gym looked like because he hit me in my, head, my face so many times. Um but uh, working out with him, you know, I went to Floyd Mayweather's gym, went to a, a lot of fights. You know, I just kind of wanted to, like, soak up as much as I could, you know, about the sport and really respect it as much as, as, much as possible and, uh, and uh, become a fighter, man. Right. Well, it certainly helps with the authenticity in the film. I mean, I think about, like, uh, some of the boxing matches, particularly that one uh, kind of early on in the film that's done all in one take, yep. you know. Yep. Pretty hard to, to hide you in that. Can you talk about <laughs> Doing that uh, scene? Yeah, we didn't really try to hide. Honestly, for me, I wanted, you know, uh, the fact that I could do 100% of my stunts was like really, you know, that, was, that doesn't really happen all the time. So for me, it was, uh, it was a big accomplishment. And we put a lot of hard work and time into it. Clayton Barber, um, our fight choreographer, and, um, and, and, and our cinematographer, and, you know, Maris, and, and, and our camera guy, Ben, we were, we were very, very hands-on kind of learning this choreography. So it took us months. And, um, and Gabe Rosado as well, you know, he's a Philly fighter who, who uh, was the fighter, uh, played uh, uh, Leo in, in the project. So when we were, you know, I love Warners, you know, as like, you know, Fruitville, we, we had, a, you know, we had a few, but we, you know, I've always tried to push, you know, I always, when I, whenever I can get, put my two cents in when it comes to stuff like that, I'm always pushing, let's try to get it in one shot. Let's just do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, you fall in love with, the, you know, the good fellas, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I love with those, those shots, and I think it's just such a powerful, you know, whatever stadium. So anyway, uh, I think we did it 13, 13 takes. I think we got it on the 11th take, the take, or we did it, or the 13th take. It was one of those, I can't remember it, which, which one it was, but we finally got it, and it's like a, a violent ballet, you know? Like when, when you know, there's this choreography, but then there's moments where you can't wait for choreography. So you have to actually, you have to improv and you have to, you know what I'm saying? So, so a lot of times, you know, you know, when our guards are up, sometimes I'm talking to them through my mouth. Like I'm just, I'm literally just talking to them. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling them, you know what I'm saying? All right, if we, we, you know, we mess up, you know what I'm saying? All right, started off from, you know what I'm saying? From this, from that, or depending on where we are in the ring, we can pick back up for the choreography. So there's a lot of elements that kind of played into us kind of getting that shot. And um, I'm glad, I'm glad it, we, we pulled it off. Uh, let's talk a bit about uh, your character's relationship with Rocky. There's a real father-son dynamic to it. Uh, can you talk about working with Stallone and, and that relationship? Man, I mean, Sly, when I first met him, it was, uh, it was, I, I, didn't know, I didn't know what to expect, you know? I heard about, I heard about Ryan's first time meeting him, you know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, cool, all right. So, so I kind of already knew that he was going to be super cool. And then I walked into his, uh, his, um, you know, his office. And it was like talking to one of my uncles, man. He was super laid back, chill. We, uh, we talked about sports and, you know, he, I mean, he can tell you, you know, he tells you, he knows a lot of it about a lot, you know? So he, he's very, he's a very interesting guy and completely not Rocky, you know, not what you, what you, what you're so used to seeing him on, on screen. So that was, uh, you know, that was very impressive as well to see such a big, a huge distinctive, you know, some difference between the two, between the two. Um, and we got along great, you know. Honestly, it was like there was there was no resistance. There was no there was no weird energy. We started talking about you know sports and football and you know how to hit. And we started shadow boxing a little bit and like going through routines right there in the first like you know forty five minutes that we met each other. So and then from then on, it was just like a collaborative process, you know, between another actor 
and uh, you know, and, and, and producer, and just wanted to make the project as best as possible and try to fill as many holes as we can, and answer as many questions as, as I had, and vice versa. So we, we really filled each other out, and 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 by the time we actually got to set to Philly, it was like, man, this is this is OG right here. This is on. This is this, this is on. Let's, let's do it. And then we, then we had a common goal. We had something that we wanted to accomplish, and and that kind of trickled into I think our characters, um, that dynamic, that um, mentor, um, mentee uh, kind of uh, relationship, father-son kind of relationship kind of bl blended over from our personal relationship. And then it was fun to play the friction. Mm -hmm. You know, when you find those moments between the characters of friction of not knowing each other, that's the real fun parts because it's like, you know what I'm saying? you you. You know, when, it, when, when you yell cut, it's all about trying to figure out how to make it work as much as possible, not trying to find the comfortability in it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and, then, and then we just kind of live in the moment. And, 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 and you know, so it, it was really fun, man. I had a lot of fun uh, working with him. Right. And what did Ryan Kugler give you guys as a director that really helped your performances? I think I think Ryan is you know he's a big collaborator man he's very smart man so it's like like Sly does I guess like these couple of, you know examples that Sly honestly he'll come to, you know what I'm saying the set you know with all these handwritten notes you know what I'm saying the script is I'm talking about is detailed I'm front and back I'm like where you where how much work I know what time I got home last night <laughs> <laughs> again I did my work and I was like but I, this is this is impressive so it's like you know Ryan you know he can't show up to work and, and feel like any of us outworked him, you know? So Ryan outworks all of us, you know, Ryan, Ryan is putting in the time, you know, he's putting in the hours, he's figuring, he's finding the holes in, in, or just, just trying to find ways to make it better. So when we get to set, he's had, he has so many other angles that I didn't even think about or something that I wouldn't have thought of. And we, and we, we just find, find those, those, those moments. Um, and then also allowing us to, to have, to find those to find organic moments in the scene that may or may not be on the page, you know, giving us that ability to improv and kind of go off the page and find those and live in the moment, you know, he like he gives us takes for us all the while him getting exactly what he needs because he's like you know because serving his vision as well. So I think Ryan's biggest you know say um you know tool is he's he's very um now he's you know he knows a lot but he's not he's not afraid to you know say you know. You know, uh, he's unsure about something or collaborate on somebody else or something. He, he's very, very on top of things, man. Ryan's Ryan's a sharp, sharp dude, and he kind of was the glue to bring bring everybody together. Because something about him, like when he talks, you just listen and you believe him. You know, he has this this earnest kind of quality about him that you know you you you. It, it's like a masculinity and 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 and. And like, kind of like a and a softness to him, you know what I'm saying? That a lot, like that, that, that gains, you know what I'm saying? A trust, especially from your from your actors and from your crew, and it just trickles. That's that's on the project. Always kind of, you know, we, we we he rubs off on us. So that and I think that's the, a really great quality to have. Absolutely. Um, you know, I want to ask you since you've been acting since you were a kid. Um, I remember you from The Wire uh, about you know 10, 15 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. What have you learned in your time uh, as an actor? You know, what can you continue to learn? Man, that's, <laughs> uh, what have I learned, man? I learned so much. Uh, I, I kind of grew up in, t in the industry and looking back at it, which is crazy, man, time flies. It's, you know, patience, uh, I, I learned patience, it's like, there's different parts of my, I remember my teenage years, you know, being in the, in the, in the industry and, you know, how you know, my thought process went or how I looked at things and looked at the world and, you know, my process. And then I kind of, you know, my early 20s, you know, and kind of how that is. And I'm 28 now, I'm 29. I'm like, man, I'm going to be 30. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but I look at my career as, as, as just growth, constant growth. You know, I always try to go from job to job and, and, and project to project and, and just try to grow and learn something from somebody there. 
you know, that's why I'm, you know, my taste is kind of all over the place because I like a lot of different things and I can appreciate, you know, the DP and the sound engineer and, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, the grips and, you know, and, and the script supervisors and, you know, I understand the whole nuance and like all the pieces that come together on a project. And that's something that always interested me, just like all these little things going into one big major thing, you know, and kind of how they make that work. So that's, that's, that's something that I've always learned and then just being patient and, um, Try to be honest with your work, you know, try to make decisions in your career for yourself and for growth and, and progress. You know, it's like it's a business as well, but at the same time, it's, a, it's, 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 it's art, you know, and, and, I, and I look at it as, you know, an, an, an expressive way to kind of get your thoughts and your emotions out there sometimes on certain projects. Because every, every project isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to check all your boxes, you know, and it's very rare when you do find one, you know. Um, and those are the ones that I think are the most, most, you know, memorable um, besides like the, the unforeseeable failures that kind of, kind of pop up, that kind of stick with you for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think, yeah, so I think it's a combination of all that, man. And then, you know, just trying to be honest and, you know, and, 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 and I think what, what else do I have to learn? I think I have everything else to learn, you know, and that's, and that's, and that's a lot, man. I have, you know, so much that I want to do and, you know, things, things that, things that, uh, you know, that I want to experience to, you know, I have more life to live. You know, that's another thing is like, I, like, I'm so curious to the man I'm going to be like in my thirties, you know, so like I, I'm growing up, but then that's going to open up a whole nother layer of experiences for me to add to my work, to my characters. And I'm really excited about that. You know, as I get older, the more things that I do and experience and time that I put on this planet is more experiences and layers that I can put into characters to play. So I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations again on your win and on the film and good luck with the rest of the season. Really Thank great. you, man. I appreciate it. Sorry. Man. I'm drink well, this <laughs> I'm addicted to it. <laughs> yeah, All right. Well, take care. Have a great day. Thank you. Again. You're welcome.